Trial and error, I got uh, the bearings put in, these ends here. Uh, when I drilled this hole, I thought I was using an inch and a quarter, but it actually it is an inch and an eighth, so inch and a quarter would have been a little too big. I mentioned before that I had used inch and a quarter. And, uh, and originally I told you when we made these parts, I left this longer, drilled the hole, pressed the bearing in, then rounded it off. Well, I didn't do it on this one here. And the same thing happened when I made the prototype is that uh, you get it, it can crack in here. But uh, what I did there, and which I'll do here, it's still held in securely, is take some uh, CA glue and just CA glue that together. That's what happens when you don't follow your own, your own instructions. But uh, if you make that mistake, uh, just use some CA glue and uh, fill that up. And it'll be as good as new. Okay, I think that uh, worked okay. I actually put it on the right way. Make sure your slot's at the back. I think when I showed you originally, I had it flipped around, but I did do it right. Now, to do this one, I think I'm just going to set that through there. Use a bolt for the guide uh, to hold these perfectly lined up. Then I'll just go through that hole to drill it. So then I should get uh, everything uh, perfectly matched up. Whenever you can, uh, use uh, methods where you don't have to lay out the holes because you lay it out, uh, it's not going to come out where things perfectly fit or match or etc. Uh, try to use uh, methods to, to where you don't have to work to work from points because your drill will never drill right on the exact point that you have. Maybe on metal it will, but wood is a little bit different. I'm going to go ahead and assemble this right now uh, because uh, I'll show you what I, why I'm doing this in a second or so here. But anyway, uh, we're going to use these uh, 100 uh, millimeter, 12 millimeter bolts. And you need a large washer that'll come out to the basically outside of your bearing there. So I'm just using standard half inch bearings and uh, half inch washers. That'll go through and it'll be transfer the pressure right out to the outside there. Then I, if possible, put a small bearing on the inside uh, that doesn't come out to the outside. Now you might be able to buy these smaller ones. You can see the difference in size there. Uh, at a hardware type store or I can, I'll can i give you a supplier where you can get these these types here. They're easily available. So um, that's going to go, so we put that in the inside there and then uh, we'll pop that through there. Remember what I said about that? Can, you want a nice knife. side there and uh, then a, s a small bearing small uh, washer and then the other side and a large washer and then the nut These 100 millimeter seems to be working out, and I'm using a nylock uh, nut. Okay, those work really not reasonably good. Now, this this piece here, so I had it in the wrong way. Okay, I thought there was something wrong. Okay, you can see the 
amount of difference that we have there. So I need two pieces of wood glued on each side here that'll make up that difference there. <clears throat> so that'll kind of be the next step, get, a, get this to fit in here tight. You just have to use a, sh a shim of wood on each side there. And that's going to go like this. But you have to have this tightened up so you know where the, what the proper spacing is. As I uh, mentioned earlier, if you uh, pressed your bearing up and didn't have enough uh, wood up here, like I did on that, uh, those arms, it would crack here and I showed you how to put the uh, epoxy on there. Well, as it turned out, I didn't really, wasn't satisfied with uh, the, this first one I, I worked on. So I decided to redo the arms because I didn't have quite enough room for the bolt to go through there. And that, uh, that involved this piece as well. So I thought, well, why put it together and uh, not have it uh, right? So I've just, I had some extra material, so I'm just making two more pieces there. So what I did on this, I thought, well, why don't I just, I just use those other ones, traced out the holes and uh, I'm going to drill the holes right now while there's lots of wood in here. It's not going to crack for sure. And uh, press the bearings and then cut it in half. So anyway, I'll continue on this. It won't take very long to, to make a new one. And uh, I'll be a lot more happy with it in the end. I'll, in the plan, I'll have the longer length that would be better. Well, that idea was very successful. Uh, pop them in there, cut the, the end round, uh, no cracks. So you don't waste any material by making it longer and then having to cut it off after the bearings are uh, pressed in. I'll probably remember that and do that in the future. By making that a bit longer, it uh, gives me a little more space for that hole that I want to put a bolt through to hold the uh, the extra the top piece on and uh, these little uh, is for clearance so in the uh, arm there it can swing back farther if you didn't have those corners cut off it wouldn't give as much uh, motion anyway I'll finish this up and we'll be on our way to finish this project. Okay, I'm going to start making the post uh, that will hold uh, this part. And I've I measured my uh, lathe and it's 13 and a half inch swing. Now the bottom of this is not going to sit right on the lathe. I'm going to have a three quarter piece underneath. So then I subtracted three quarters. And then uh, this is going to, this part will slide on the top of it. So I want the distance from the center of this to the bottom, which uh, uh, I've determined, I thought I'd make it two inches, but uh, one and three quarters or, or a, little, a little less than two inches, uh, I'm going to lay that down to inch and three, inch and an eighth, which this part here will, and it'll just slide right over. Then I'll be making I'll be making the base later on there. So next step, uh, take this set up on the lathe and uh, lay this down so it just a snug fit through there. Okay, I've uh, got these pieces for the uh, post. When I was thinking about it, I had different ideas in my mind. I'd do it like this or do it like that, you know. But uh, when it came right down to it, I think what I've done here is probably better than my original ideas. Uh, this post is going to be mounted on uh, the post I've uh, laid that out with an inch and a three-eighths on the end, which will fit the uh, articulating arm. 
And then I just laid it down here a little bit uh, to make it look pretty. You always like to have something look pretty, not big sharp edges. And it will mount on, a, on the base, basically like that. And uh, when I originally thought I would have a slot on both sides and you could move your lathe one way or the other way, but uh, I thought, well, if you do that, you have to take it off and change it over here, where if you just put the slot on one side, then you can just flip it around and you're on all right to the other side of the lathe. And then when I was thinking about braces here, I'll put this on this side, is if you put two braces on, then it's hard to get to the nut in here. So why not just put the uh, braces on the outside? Uh, so that will fit like that. And, uh, and this leaves uh, this area here 100% uh, clear to do up your bolt on the, on the lathe, to bolt it to the lathe bed there. So I think this is gonna work out quite well. Um, when you design things, you come up with ideas and then as you come along, you see the problems and then you change it. And, uh, but lots of people like a plan where it's all figured out before them. So I will put a basic plan at the end and with anything that I build, you take the idea and uh, change it to suit your needs. Uh, and you might come up with something even better. Anyway, I'll, now I'm just gonna go through and sand this. I'll show you my sander uh, that I've been using all along here. And uh, I've posted it on YouTube before, but it's just one fantastic sander. This is the sander that I've been using on, as I've been working on these parts that I really like. I've got two sanders behind me, a, a drum sander and also a 99 inch uh, edge sander. But I much prefer this one to use because it's quiet and uh, smaller and it, it just works so much well. It runs at a slower speed so you don't burn your wood. And okay, I've got all my parts uh, basically done here now, ready for final assembly. But I have to assemble this part here. And uh, so I've got to put this part on there and then another one on top. But I'm going to glue the bottom. So I put a little bit of glue on there. And I'll just set that over the top so it lines it up. If you had another uh, one that was the right size, it would probably work. And I'll just put a little pressure on that. Let that set until um, it doesn't move. And then I'll clamp it for a little while. And then uh, be ready to put the top on. The top was going to be put on with a bolt and a couple screws so it could be adjusted for fit. <coughs> To drill the, the hole to, that holds the top one in, uh, I assembled it over the post so it was perfectly lined up and tight, assembled it, tightened it together. This was uh, sanded for a nice snug fit. And uh, then I marked the end of the piece there and I'm gonna put the hole right there. Now the drill won't go all the way through but it'll go into the bottom one and uh, so then I'll disassemble it and then continue drilling it there. So it's just a matter of turning it on, mark the place where your hole is and start drilling. While uh, I had it all together it was time to cut the slot for the uh, so it can be tightened onto the uh, post there uh, using uh, a backup board as I ran it through the saw there. You can see it in behind there. So now I just have to drill a, a cross uh, bolt hole to uh, uh, for the tightening bolt. Okay I've got all the pieces here and uh, it's pretty well ready to put together as far as I know. I've got all the holes drilled etc. Uh, 
not a lot of wood is used. Um, I think there, you could probably do it with two board feet. I know the first board I had was uh, eight inches wide and two feet long, and I made a few mistakes. I uh, had to redo a couple things, had a few more scraps around, and uh, use those. So it's all out of oak. I'd probably recommend a different wood, uh, uh, probably maple or something like that, uh, nice dense wood. But uh, I think this is going to be uh, turn out to be quite nice here. Anyway, I uh, mentioned before that uh, I drilled this 15 30 seconds so it's a tight fit in here. But as I was looking at my other one, because the coarse threaded ones, they were smaller diameter as I've mentioned before and uh, I was wondering why when I put this together just on trial it was a little bit stiff but the it's got to be a close fit but it's got to be loose in the uh, in here to have a nice smooth action when it's bolted together it holds it tight with uh, between the washers etc and it'll it'll work a lot better but actually this needs to turn with the action so I drilled that out one size bigger 1 64th uh, bigger than the 15 30 seconds and now I can just the bolt will go through easily it actually makes assembly uh, easier too so uh, we'll take a, a bolt here that I made up special and uh, you use a large washer on the top and then one of these small washers in diameter is better if you can find those. Those you can get from aircraft spruce and specialty. They're actually aircraft uh, washers. And uh, the boring bars, that 4130 uh, eighth wall three quarter inch, uh, uh, you get that from uh, aircraft spruce specialty there and that's a mail order place it's they sending stuff out for home builders all the time so we've got uh, we'll take this piece that'll go through there and then a washer and, uh, and we'll slide it through this will be the next part that goes on and uh, this is glued onto here and we'll pop that on. Let's see, I guess we need a, another small washer. Don't want to forget the procedures here. That one. And a large washer. And then the nut. But this is one of the coarse bolts that I used uh, from before. There's nothing wrong with the coarse bolts. Uh, you could go ahead and eat you can get coarse, go ahead and use them. And then it's just a matter of tightening this up. And it uh, works quite easily there. The bolt has to stay with the uh, top part there because that's bolted on there and then it pivots around the uh, bearing on the inside so that's how that works now I've got a, a bolt here this is going to go right through there it should should be uh, have to tap that through. Okay, so I've got something else I see that I've got to do here, but uh, I'll be back in a second. Okay, I guess we're back in business. Uh, what I hadn't done is I hadn't drilled uh, uh, this bolt all the way through the bottom, so I just had to loosen this, swing it to the side, and then continue drilling to the bottom there. I mentioned that in the previous segment there then I forgot to do it anyway I put the bolt in and I put the uh, using uh, carriage bolts uh, putting the the head part at the bottom here and the reason for that is 
it's going to go on to here this way there's a little shoulder here and it would the uh, bolt head and nut would uh, rub on there so I assembled it uh, backwards from what I wanted to do in the beginning there but that could have been laid smaller and it, it would probably work there and then the next and when I tighten it up I put one screw in there already uh, because this top part is not uh, is not glued on because you have to be able to assemble it otherwise you couldn't get the washers in so I drilled that so it wouldn't split out and just uh, so then that it'll be held up very securely with two screws and the bolt in the center there. I also thought, I got to looking at it and I thought, you know, why don't I put two on the back even though it's, it's already glued? And of course, it's, so it's held together super good there. And that will just slide over there. Okay, what do we have to assemble next? The next thing we have to do is put uh, two of these on. And I've uh, marked them just so I got them matched from what they, you see those little marks there. We'll put those at the one end. So let's put those in uh, right away. And uh, we'll take a bolt, a big washer. Big washer and uh, then a narrow washer. And we'll pop that through there. There's no top and bottom to that. And then another narrow washer. Okay, I've got the other part that holds the uh, boring bar. What happened was, uh, when I put the uh, these bolts in, I had I tapped them into uh, because it's a carriage bolt. The only trouble was I had this this slot in here. And I didn't uh, space that out. So if you're tapping on that to put uh, to, to get these so they fit flush there, make sure you put a piece in there because I put a little crack in it. So I had taken it and, and put, put some C A glue in there and was drying it, getting it uh, set up there. So I didn't I didn't have it there. But anyway, so. Another thing I discovered I didn't have was uh, was another couple of the small washers. So what I did was I just took a regular washer, I think it was probably a 3 8 washer, and uh, ran the drill through it. Uh, and they look basically the same as the as the the bought ones, but yeah, you can make your own washers. They're small, and being that it's a little different thickness, I put I took it apart and put one here and one here, so you get the same thickness all over. So then that'll go on there. You don't get it quite right. It just and then your two big washers. Suppose I don't have it. Oh, there's my other big washer. And then the, the nuts. Okay, and that's all there is to it. Very simple construction. Uh, I kind of gave you hints and kinks uh, to a uh, way to do things. Showed you the mistakes I did and how I corrected them. So we can learn by each other's mistakes. And uh, anyway, I'll go tighten this up and, uh, and show you what it looks like in a few minutes here. Well, got it all assembled now. And uh, this is what she looks like. It's got lots of movement wherever you go. Very smooth action. You have probably a little bit more resistance than a metal one, but 
it certainly works very nicely. What I did on the prototype one is I put a piece of wood in here and screwed it and that still can still can be done but I'm going to try this without that because it folds up so nice and neat without that it hardly takes up any space at all so and a lot of the ones that you have don't have it and it appears that you don't get any you can torque on this and you don't get any 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 movement there so it probably doesn't need the uh, but that can be put in on at a later time just a piece of wood now that it's assembled put together and then screwed I'd use screws rather than gluing it solid because then you could disassemble it a lot easier so anyway um, the next thing to do will be to uh, test it out I'll do another demo video on this one as I did in the, that uh, prototype one which attaches to the quill of the, the on the tail sock there with it so there'll be another one coming along so subscribe and you'll get uh, more updates on uh, uh, this uh, hollowing tool setup thanks for watching just like to picture uh, another modification that I found uh, I think was necessary with the one bolt going through the center it uh, actually squeezed it and cracked the uh, wood slightly there to tighten it up tight enough when I put it onto the post um, so I added a couple pieces of metal to each side I was actually going to uh, put several bolts spaced apart but then I realized I had the screws that come down so with using those screws as you can see pictured there I can only use one bolt in the middle there and that just some scrap steel I had uh, I believe it's one quarter of an inch thick but uh, that seemed to tighten it up really nice spread the load over the whole surface there so that's a, a, a an addition that you might consider possibly even two pieces of wood would work there but I thought the metal would be stronger anyway uh, I'll be just trying this out here shortly, so um, you'll get to see that in another video.